The date is Friday, February 4th, and you're listening to Entertain This, a thought-provoking podcast encapsulating all things entertainment. On this episode, we'll be discussing a video game from the creators of the Dark Souls series called Bloodborne. We'll get to the central message of the game and give a transfusion into the background of the lore. So sit back and enjoy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the only show on the internet encapsulating all things entertainment. Let's entertain this. Entertain this. I can't get deep. As always, I'm Alex. I'm Michael. And I'm Nick. Guys, there's this weird thing that happens every time that I go to edit the podcast where I have to edit out like a good three seconds of us staring awkwardly at our cameras. Uh, like the music plays, it does the dun 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 and then it like fades out and it shows our faces. And then there are three seconds where it's just us staring at the camera. And then I start the welcome, everybody, the only show on the internet canceling. And I'm always like, those three seconds didn't happen in real life. In real life, as soon as that thing clicked away, I started. And I don't know. <laughs> I cut those three seconds out every week from the video version of the podcast. Can we get a super cut of that? Of just those three seconds? Oh, my God. Yeah, that just like incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll make one. I'd, I'd have to start now, but yes, I will make one starting like now. Minus tips. That mean where it's just like staring. <laughs> it's like I the can't. whole like man changes his shirt every day for 80 days. <laughs> yeah, except it's literally it's just like over and over again. It's just me inhaling. So it's like. <laughs> 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 Okay, so that was probably enjoyable for our, our audio <laughs> podcast that we do. Everyone hey, make mouth noises. They okay, like this that. is this is where the cold <laughs> open starts. You guys hear about those Cincinnati Bagos? I might have heard a thing or two about them. You guys hear about what they're doing up in in, in Cincinnati? Din? Yeah, they're uh, winning the football games. In case you guys didn't know, Entertain This is filmed in front of a live internet audience from the great city of Cincinnati, for the most part. If you were to mm-hmm. triangulate where the three of us are as we record this, it would center in Cincinnati. Yeah. So the the Cincinnati the Cincinnati Bengos are um are are a piece of this show's heart. And they are winning games thanks to Joey Burr, uh, also known as Joey Franchise, also known as Joe Burno. Bur- <laughs> Joe Burno. And he's got a good old arm, and he's throwing it to that, that guy whose name, he's so fast, his name is Chase. Yeah, incredible. Jim <laughs> Funny. In- incredible, the team. And they may be going to the Slooper Bowl. And... You just by the get time back from the dentist right? by the time this ep- sh- by the time this sh- by the time this episode releases they might not even be in the right re- in the con- <laughs> like contending anymore for all we know and that'll date this we record this on the friday before so sunday's game hasn't happened yet but right. for all we know the sin- the cincinnati ba- the cincinnati bang- bangos are going to the sloopler blowl hey <laughs> Or they're not. Knock on wood. It really no, does wait. sound. Really it really don't. does sound like you just got like your entire mouth injected. Yeah. With <laughs> He's got that Novocaine shot. Yeah. Like, no, hang now. <laughs> Give me Novocaine. Hashtag Green Day. Uh, <laughs> that's the end of the, your local news and your cold open for this week. Another week has passed. It's episode, guys. It's guys. It's the end of your local anesthetic. <laughs> it's episode. It's episode ninety nine of the podcast. That's big. That's a big number. To be honest, I'm surprised we made it to 10. It is nuts that next week we are going to be on episode 100. Centennial. Of the podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just wild to think about. A hundred hundred hours. More more than a hundred hours. Yeah. Of us three boys being just three goofy boys. Being three absolute slapstick blokes, <laughs> man, it's incredible, incredible <laughs> journey we've been on, and I'm just so happy about it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. An episode 100 should be something. It's not gonna be extreme. We're saving the extreme stuff for like episode, you know, 200 or episode right. 500. 
10 yeah. years down the line or whatever. Uh, but we're going to have a good time next week. But this week, episode 99 belongs to Michael. Oh, yeah. Was, okay. Yeah, I'm going. All right. Woo! Speed racer. Oh, it, was, All right. it was seamless. <laughs> See, here's the issue. Here's my favorite part of our podcast. That's going to be everybody else's least favorite part is I feel that often I have to steamroll the podcast in its direction, which was my New Year's resolution was to try not doing that as much as possible. So on a normal instance, I, it would have gone something like this. But this week belongs to Michael. Hey, Michael, do you have something you want to talk to us about? Oh, that's, and then Michael would say, queue. yeah, see, and then Michael would say, yeah, guys. Hi, I'm here to talk about. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm I don't want to do it that way. No, I that's not do us. It like, I want to do it like this. I want to do not it. Us. <laughs> I want to do it this way. This is the yeah. way I want to do it. I want to go. But this week belongs to Michael. Heidi, Heidi, ho, everyone. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> just, all this awkwardness energy is just like building above us like a giant thousand ton boulder if we're lucky Someday it'll crush gonna... us before the 100th episode <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah hi everyone i'm here to talk about a video game named bloodborne wow uh, michael talking about a video game how original yeah i, I, kind of... <laughs> I don't watch tv uh, when I do it's anime, <laughs> and you guys make fun of me for it. <laughs> I don't oh, we're not gonna make it to a hundred, guys. No. <laughs> we're not gonna make it. Anyway, hey, I, I, it's my episode. Get with the times. We're all it. going on an adventure. All right, so a little bit of required reading for this podcast, but not so really. Like back a while ago, a few months, like six or months or so ago, I talked six about or... Dark Souls. Dark, Dark Souls. Souls is it's that game that's really hard to beat. Yeah, it's really hard to beat, but it's like does it in a very in a way that's like very artfully so and very purposeful to yeah. really lend to like the story and to really make you feel like the, the the real culmination of all is to give you this sense of major accomplishment. It's not yeah. like a lot of other action games where you just press buttons, do things and outcome happens. It's like solving a Rubik's cube. You finish up one side and you're like, oh man, I got this far, but then you fuck it up and you're like, I'm gonna have to get it back. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you really gotta, it's kind of like a Rubik's cube. Yeah. You gotta analyze things as you're going and like kind of look ahead of where you wanna be and like yeah. where thing, like what every action of yours is gonna be doing. Well, there's a game made by the same people from Fuck. software. God damn it. That is kind of a lot like Dark Souls, takes a lot of the same Shit. elements, but Fuck. but executes it in a way that to me makes even more sense and makes it an even better game. Is it harder? No, I would say it, it here, here here's the thing that's that's special about Bloodborne. These oh. games are hard, but yep. Bloodborne teaches you how to play these games. Oh. Like the other games, they've got these different other things. Like you've got a shield. You can sit and play like really passively, always have your shield up, mm -hmm. be ready for any incoming attack. Yep. And like do what's called like turtling because you're you're just like a little turtly boy hiding in your little turtle shell. Yeah. Just waiting for the danger to pass. Yeah. Um, in Bloodborne, you're actively discouraged from using a shield. Get out and of here so with that what it teaches shield. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and what it does, is it teaches you that you really have to analyze who, whatever you're fighting, and learn the mechanics in and out, and use it in this way that encourages you to play incredibly aggressively in comparison to Dark Souls. And you know what other video game you play extremely aggressively? Call of Duty, Tetris, S Super Mario sixty four. Michael was the closest Ooh. without going over. Ooh. To, I, I do get really mad when I play Mario 64. <laughs> the only way to play Mario 64 is a hundred percent effort. Yeah, there's no halfway. No, you can't you can't finesse your way through Super Mario 64. You're not gonna beat a you're not you're not gonna beat a fucking penguin down a no. slide of ice <laughs> with 95% effort. Joey Joey Berber will tell you that. It's a hundred percent every day. <laughs> Joey Super Burns, Mario Bros. Like <laughs> Super Mario 64 is one of those games where it's like you grow up and like you have memories of being good at it and like being able to beat the levels and shit. And then you go watch like someone do a speed run and you just are like willing to throw yourself self off of the closest building. Is that what this game is like? The one we're talking about today? No, 
I would say that like this doesn't give you that feeling. Mm -mm. Would you say it gives us the opposite feeling? It gives me a lot of happy feel good juices. Oh, but it's yeah. a dark Dis game. It's Disgusting. a very dark game. Yeah. Which is so, so, really so dark. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let's let's go over like Can we go over it's a dark game. What what game is this again? What are we talking about? You yeah, said it so once. We're, it... <laughs> we're talking about Bloodborne. Bloodborne, Bloodborne is and last a... time we talked about Dark Souls. Okay, they're both two words. That's yeah. the confusion that I was well, feeling. Blood, Bloodborne feel is like... one word. Uh like, yes. like a bloodborne they're disease. Like... They're like yeah. compound yeah, words. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If there was any confusion in the audience, I'm playing the part of you, the confused audience member who wants to know which <laughs> game we're talking about. So the game here. we're talking about is Bloodborne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, let me let me just kind of give like an overview of like what Bloodborne is before kind of jumping too far down the rabbit hole. So Bloodborne is a game that's made by the same people from software, the same people who made Dark Souls. Dark Bloodborne Souls. is a more Victorian horror take on the same genre mm. with a little bit of a mix in of HP Lovecraft in there. Oh, uh, a little Cthulhu yeah. action, a little, a little Eldritch Cthulhu horror action. Yeah. You're going insane and losing your mind and killing Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of that. All this stuff makes you feel real good. Really, yeah. really good. <laughs> <laughs> you said Lovecraft, I'm out. <laughs> Do you not like Lovecraft, Nick? You know, like HP Love. Okay, thing... separating the artist yes. from the art as it's so difficult to do. Okay, so his because HP Lovecraft was a piece of crap. Yeah, we can all agree on that. Mm -hmm. No, he had a cat by a terrible name. You can Google it if you want, but it's just a bad guy. I'm good. Yeah, is don't, it... don't worry about it. You yeah. can Google it later, or you can Google it now. I don't care. Just don't yeah, talk about it anyway. Like, makes it also like really hard to separate art from the artist in that case because a lot of him is in the art. I mean, I'm a I'm a an advocate for never destroying somebody's love for expression even if the person who expressed it is bad you can hate a person and like what they yeah. do that's fine what i'm saying is uh he was a fucked up guy who made some interesting stuff but it was still fucked up stuff yeah the thing that's unique about hp lovecraft is that he was able to capture the sense of fear of everything around him that he genuinely felt in his life Mm-hmm. Like yeah. he he was a man who was scared of everything. Yep. Uh, and the potential effects it could have on his life. To a fault. And, yeah. Oh, I mean, like HP Lovecraft, he was one of those artists that like his works didn't actually become popular until well after he died. Like Van Gogh. Yeah. Hmm. Should we do an episode on Lovecraft? Ooh, I would love to do an episode on Lovecraft. Do the we only want thing... to start over? <laughs> the only thing I know about Lovecraft is that. Uh, the Dunwich Building and Fallout Three was heavily influenced by the yeah. Dunwich Horror. The Dun it's, oh, it's okay. Dunwick Dunwick Mining Co. Something like that. Yes, yeah. it's like a it's like a quarry. It's the Dunwick Quarry. That's what it is in Fallout. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I went to that building once, and then you do like the thing where you hallucinate or something, and you see things. Mm -hmm. I was like, nope, that's good enough for me. I turned down and walked out the building. <laughs> Never I think that we'll do again. We'll do a we'll do a Lovecraft <laughs> episode probably. Yeah, okay. and we'll want to save all this for that. Yeah, we'll touch on like a little bit of like Lovecraftian themes here and there today, but like we're not going to dive too deep into it. Um, how is it? How is it shown in the game? Is there any like a Lovecraft monster from there? Well, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so let, let's go through the premise of the game really quick. Hey, can you, we? Yeah. So you, we, we are in this city called Yarnum. Uh, Say it again. Yarn ha yarn ham yarn how do you, how do you print it how do you spell that y h a r n a m yarn yarn yarnum yarnum it's like putnam yeah putnam yeah putnam. exactly <laughs> everyone so, knows putnam you yeah. you are an you are an outsider you have traveled to yarnum and you are here in yarnum to receive what it's famous for for its blood transfusions Ah. It is this mystical, like medical feat where they have figured out how to like transfer blood into a person that will cure them of all diseases, cure them of all of their injuries, all of their problems, all of like every every issue that they have, their blood transfusions can fix it. Uh, and to a certain extent, yeah, like and it works like it actually genuinely works. Um, hmm. There is a church theocrat theocratical organization that runs the ministration of this blood and it is only through them that the red you cross. can receive it 
<laughs> caught. <laughs> Agree or disagree? Go. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's imagine imagine a a world where the Catholic Church no. has figured out how to <laughs> cure all of your diseases and issues. And it was God the whole through, time through communion, like through no. the act of communion and receiving that little little like plasticky wafer cookie and <laughs> drinking some of that grape juice wine. Uh, <laughs> all of your problems go away. Uh, that is the, that is kind of like. <laughs> Yeah, you know that. Yeah, like oh yeah, we're getting our Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's incredible. It's pretty funny though, right? That's a, yeah. that's a thing. A little yeah. sacrilegious, but whatever. Yeah, it's like, it's the sort of thing you me... come up with when you're in Catholic school. <laughs> give me a bag of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, they're pretty good. Yeah. They're a little cardboardy, but Nick, I have anyway. a question for you. Did it, did they ever make you like practice getting communion before you were actually oh, yeah. allowed to get? Commun- okay, cool. Yeah, it was like first communion, like the entire thing was okay. Put your right hand. Down on your left hand, you're going to hold it out like a pillow, like yeah. this. Then you go up and you say, what do you even say? <laughs> I forget. What, can I have communion, please? You say something like that. And then you have to say, amen. Well, no, no, no. What it is, is what, the priest says something in Latin to you and you say, amen. Yeah. And then he gives you the cookie. That's right. Yeah. He says, uh, body of Christ. That's what he says. And then you say, amen. Have yeah. I told you guys, or have I told this on the podcast, the story of the time where I didn't take communion and a girl broke up with me? You told me that. <laughs> what? <laughs> You've told me this story. Uh, so here's this. here's the premise: is I'm Too dating a girl. Time. Whatever. <laughs> well, no, because we're talking about Bloodborne, and there's a communion in Bloodborne of some okay. sort. Yeah, some sort of a religious encounter. So, During so blood it's, Jesus. So it's Christmas Eve, and this girl has invited me to a Christmas Eve mass with her family. <laughs> um, I'm not Catholic, and I'd never met a girl's parents before. So I'm nervous for two reasons. Number one is because the Catholic Church is a scary place. Mm-hmm. They look scary from the outside. That's bad. They're too big. Yeah. No building needs to be that big. You go inside, so much wasted space. Why are they so tall? In the it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, well, uh, so so there I am taking. You know, I, I'm doing the whole sit, stand, kneel, sing thing mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. between her. I'm between her and her dad. And her dad's like this big buff workout guy. And he wrote a book once about how you can get your daily workouts while cleaning the house or whatever. Um, and I, I basically, it got to the part where people were taking communion. And uh, it's something in my mind had triggered that, hey, you have to be baptized to take communion. And I'm not baptized. You're actually so, right. Yeah. So you I leaned over to her. Sacrament. I don't remember how I knew that, but I knew that somehow. So I leaned over to her and I was like, I'm not baptized. I don't think I could take communion. She well, said, oh, no, you can take it. I was like, okay, look, I'm not saying there's heaven or hell, but if there is, I'm for sure going to hell if I take communion. Oh, yeah. So I'm not going to take communion. So what do I need? What do I need to do? <laughs> she was like, just take it. I was like, no, I'm not going to take it. She was like, come on, just take communion. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not going to take it. So that our pews get up, and we walk up to the priest. And she, like, takes communion. He does a little prayer thing for her. And this old lady behind me goes, I guess because she heard us, she goes, uh, just cross your arms over your chest and he'll know what that means. Right. Because Mm -hmm. that means like, I'm not baptized. I'm sorry. I can't take communion. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I get up to the priest and I cross my arms over my chest and he did not get the message. (laughs) (laughs) So he goes to try to stick the cracker in my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah, And I'm like, and I'm like, I'm not going to hell. So I'm taking your goddamn cracker. (laughs) It's like a mom <laughs> trying to like feed their baby. So like, like my yeah. lips are tight and like he's confused. I'm confused. And this situation <laughs> feels like it's dragging on forever. And I'm like shaking my head like no. no and then finally no. he gets it. And finally he gets it. And so he's just like does the little hand thing. And I like try to move to get out of the way. Her dad's right behind me. <laughs> and then he does the thing. He takes communion. And then they talked out. They talked out in the parking lot away from me. I was with their mom. No. And then <laughs> they no. took me home. And then I got a text that was like, hey, we can't see each other anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so like I guess I guess her parents thought I was Catholic and that told him he's not. And that was enough. But you know, it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> no. And everything worked out for the best. But isn't it a funny story about how just the Catholic Church just loves putting their fingers in little never mind. 
<laughs> True. Oh my not, god. Not story Long this. story short, I do know about communion. I've never taken it, and I may never. Cool. So, so you get what I'm saying. Like you get, you get the, you get the vibe. I don't see how any of deal. that can be healing. Is what yes. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's, it's the whole idea of like imagining a world where, like, if you had a limp leg and like or a cancer, it's like think about like those like healing churches and sh- shit that like. It's like what Jesus now. did. He went around and he cured the yeah. weak and the. Yeah, sick but imagine and all like that. an organization using that power specifically to gain political power over all of the citizens of a yeah. City. So the Catholic Church and like yeah, right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but through this, one of the things that eventually they find out is by partaking of it long enough and frequent enough, you eventually turn into a beast. Like you oh, turn cool. into like a like. Bram Stoker, like werewolf situation. So, like, like monster energy. Yeah, exactly. It's all that taurine. Mm-hmm. Uh, turns you into a bull. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wink, wink. But that bull may give you wings, but monster. <laughs> Turn you into a monster? <laughs> give you, give you a <laughs> monster turns you into a freak. <laughs> into a freak. <laughs> I don't know. But, anyways. <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> <a> heart failure. <laughs> so we've got we've got this like backdrop of this world and this situation mm-hmm. there. So what imagine like the whole idea of like you take this this thing that is supposed to make you feel better and get rid of all your problems. But it eventually turns you into this like lycanthrope, this this were- werewolf that no. would that would dissuade you from wanting to take it. Right. Like, no. if you were like an actual person like if it you, were like an actual here. OK. God. I'd consider it. I hate I to like get on tangent because I don't want to like get you off your <laughs> off your your rant here. But it's a little too late for that now. <laughs> okay, you're right. No, I think this is a quality <laughs> episode because we're having legitimate conversations. But yeah. here's what I would say: is if offered van, if offered vampirism or werewolfism, lycanthropism, I guess is lycanthropy. Like yeah, so like a lycanthrope right would be like a werewolf, but you can only stay the werewolf part. Okay, this is my question is would you become a vampire or a werewolf if it meant you were stuck in a hideous form forever? I the, the there's a qualifier there. Do I still get to control my actions? Uh, as much as a werewolf or a vampire does. No, I would not. Because werewolves and vampires don't. Yeah, to an extent. Yeah. That's I mean, I would, it comes I would with not. it comes with immortality. I still would not. No. Nick? Not interested. That's a tough one. Uh, but <laughs> I'd probably have to go with being a human because werewolves, you don't see a whole lot of them around. And I would, uh, I'd have troubles uh, blending in with the crowds, yeah. you know? Now, Plus, what like if you were the type of werewolf or vampire who could disguise yourself as human day to day? Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be okay with that. I'd do that. <laughs> Just disguise. <laughs> Stay in disguise all the time. Then you come back home. And you're like, all right, time to hulk out. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, guys, is... do you guys subscribe to the the uh the 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 Harry Potter method of like you can only become something if you are directly named it at birth? You can what? you can only <laughs> you can only transform into something if you yeah. have a bunch of really cool delinquent friends who also are turning into things. Yeah, yeah. Well it's like the whole idea of like Remus Lupin. Like, come on. The dude was born to be a fucking werewolf. Lupin and then what? Is that- Oh, what were the yeah. other marauders names and how did that relate? Uh, was it just Lupin? No, his was the one that was like the most I mean serious black. He's Turned a serious man dog. who's always wearing black. Uh I say he's also black. <laughs> That'd yeah, be pretty cool well, too. <laughs> there's a uh, Peter Pettigrew, but uh, turned into a pedophile. No, no, <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's not true. Ignore Isn't me. it though? He was chilling in the Gryffindor comedy. I don't know. I feel like this might be like too on too <laughs> too like what for the for the, but like I feel like we're only like a few a few years away from Rowling being like yeah like Peter Pettigrew, <laughs> Peter Pettigrew oh, no. yeah he was a pedophile. <laughs> He's gonna go we allowed to say that like, word? I yeah, know. can I get my fact checker to check if we're allowed to say that word? You this isn't the Joe like Rogan the experience and the whole. Well, you know. Anyways, you can continue. No, you're totally right. All We've, right, so Bloodborne. All three. Here's the thing. Okay, <laughs> I'll say it. I'll put our cards on the table. I'll apologize for the group. 
all three of us have made at least one pedophile joke in this episode. Yeah. This episode. Between, I mean, between the Catholic Church and it's just bad things. topics. Going yeah. down that road we're not and... making fun of that. We're making fun of the Catholic Church. And we're making yes. fun of Peter Pedigree, who is also a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> not, probably not a pedophile, though. So no, not, not doesn't yet. matter. He's still a bad guy. And J.K. Rowling is a bad guy. Let's continue. <laughs> that's uh, very, very yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so bloodborne so imagine so we've we've laid out this whole scenario of like this world where like you take blood fix your problems church who runs it they're bad is it jesus's blood it. uh sure yeah, sure in this instance it is a form of like a jesus-esque thing okay it's yeah the savior so to give you like background information curious about the that. church found what's called a great old one and this is where the lovecraft stuff really like really seeps in is like in the mm, deep lore of this game the church the found Jesus figure yeah the church found a great old one a great old one is an a being that is elevated to another plane of existence however yeah. a great old one can still exist within our plane of existence in this case they found a great old one with the name ibrietas Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah. Hmm. And she is this amalgamation of tentacles, eye sockets, uh, all sorts of like... Your standard yeah, Lovecraftian Yeah, yeah, your, your standard horror. Lovecraftian thing. Cool. And she was left... To be, she's what's known as like a left behind great one. One that was not elevated to another plane so when she's, all of she's the great a, old... Instead of being a great one, she's a K one. She's still a great old one. She just wasn't like she's an she's an okay one. The the I think like I don't remember exactly, but I think the idea there is that all great old ones existed on the same plane of existence as us at one point, but then they partook of a ceremony which elevated them to another plane of existence. Oh, like and in her that phone went that one that one where Joaquin Phoenix loves his phone. Yeah. Oh, Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> They all yeah. get super smart and then they raise up to the next level of sentience and it, yeah. they can't be with humans anymore. Right. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. except Ibrietas was one that was left behind. And it was the discovery of Ibrietas that, and it is through extracting her blood. Is she alive or dead? She's alive. She's just chilling, letting people She's take just chilling. And you actually can fight her. <laughs> Why would I want that? Because she gives you. She's weak. Uh, a lot of power and she gives you i believe so she gives, she, she gives you some stuff that lets you progress in the game free abrietta 2022 yeah yeah, yeah yeah she's chilling in a chair she gives is it a chair her. no it's more like a big slug monster oh, oh i'm yeah. imagining her like chilling in one of those red cross tents or whatever like <laughs> she's got like the, the world's largest great cookie yeah. the world's largest great like, one oh, apple juice box some cookies. yeah there you go <laughs> and she's just chilling she's like oh um, what's up <laughs> thanks for donating your blood bye <laughs> <laughs> and so so basically this church uh they have figured out how to turn how to turn her blood into the old blood uh, the great old blood yeah uh, that must be a hard transition yeah they're and, like, oh, we have all this regular blood from the great old one. How are we going to turn into great old one blood? And then they like look <laughs> at it for a little. And well, because like, like the thing it. is, like they don't it's bleed blood. like how we like they still bleed, but like they bleed like this white, like mucusy blood, but Ooh, not like glow? I imagine it. Glows. No, it doesn't glow. Ah, it doesn't. Uh, it's just the, it's it's called pale blood. Pale blood. Um, yeah, because and that is like one of the things that you are like introduced to from the very get go is like your intro to the game 30 minutes into this podcast your intro to the game is you are you have sought the help from a blood administrator who is going to give you the blood yeah. um, it is through this that you experience visions of your latent beasthood coming to overtake you but you are saved by these little tiny little creatures, like these little things with these horrible, horrible faces and mouths. Um, but in a way, they grow on you and they're kind of cute now. Um, we played this game together. We made the Smurf yeah, Man. Yeah, I've shown you this game. <laughs> um, and it's through this that you are saved from the beasthood, essentially. Like you are saved. A Some force within this world is causing you to not be able to perish. 
And instead, you get sent to a dream like world where you are in this dream and in this dream, you are safe. It is called uh, the hunter's dream. And mm. you have taken on the role of the hunter. Uh, when you return, you return to what's called the waking world. So the world where everyone is awake, uh, where things are actually happening inside this dream. Things time is in this weird, like convoluted, suspended state. A bit of a Jeremy Baramy. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so it's through this that like when you first wake up after receiving the blood ministration, you receive a letter. It is just sitting there and you can completely miss it. You can walk right by it and never even look at it. But it says, seek the old, seek pale blood. Seek pale blood. Essentially, that's not the exact wording, but it essentially says like seek, seek pale blood to end this nightmare. Hmm. Uh, and so basically from before you're ever even introduced to the concept of great old ones and what that could possibly even mean the game is straight up telling you like hey there's gonna be hp lovecraft monsters go find them go kill them <laughs> well, hey boy yeah <laughs> uh and it's through this that it is now your job as the hunter to make your way through yarnum and to defeat all of the different monsters you come across with the eventual goal of trying to end this night, this everlasting night by seeking pale blood. So is it actually night out all the time? Yeah. So like one of the really cool things about this game is that like, as you're actually doing like making progression, like through the game, the world will change state. Like it'll like progress further and further into the night. Uh, oh, that's to, not good. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and that kind of like, and what that does is it like creates the situation where the further and further you get into the night, the more crazy shit that you can see. Like you have in Dark Souls, you have like two currency. You have souls, which is like your primary method of leveling up mm -hmm. and you have humanity. Uh, and if we remember back to the episode that we talked about, the whole idea of being you are an undead, you regain your humanity and that is a resource that you can spend. Right. In Bloodborne, your two forms of currency are blood echoes. Uh, so it is the echoes of the blood that you have like spilt that night. Um, so it is like the remnants of those people's power. It's easy to just think of them kind of like as souls again. Um, but then your other form of currency is insight. Because so much of this game is centered around the idea of in insanity. And like your own mental state. Very Lovecraftian. Yep. And the idea is, is that as you gain more insight, your ability to see things in the world increases. Ah! So there are things that are only revealed to you when you have enough insight. That's spooky scary because what you're saying is that the more crazy you are, the more things you see. The it's essentially like and even like the whole <laughs> even like the image that they use for the insight icon is like a head breaking open with like it like this phantasmal shit just coming out of it it's a unicorn yeah Ugh. and so it's from the get-go from the even like the basis core systems of this game is it directly related to the plot and the themes of everything that you're going to experience hmm. so does this relate to in any way is this set in the same universe as like the first two dark souls games or no no so it's a completely separate universe and okay. hence why it's not like dark souls 3 that's all yeah okay and, and even souls the different dark souls thing. games take place in the same universe but different worlds and shit and different timelines it's all weird but basically <laughs> yeah. bloodborne not related to dark souls in any way so the, can... the only thing that relates it to dark souls is the individual mechanics and the people who made it okay okay yeah I'm michael on the same page what michael huh who are these little guys? Who are these little guys with the weird faces? Why are oh. they touching me? Yeah. Get them Who's off. The little... Who? The little guys Those with the weird are... faces who saved me from becoming a big old monster, Nick. Get your head out of your eyes. <laughs> uh, those are Smurfs. The... I don't think that's <laughs> right. <laughs> no, nope, that's not the word. That's not what I was looking for. Bloodborne little guys. That's what I'm going to Google for this. Okay. We're cutting that part out, right? We're for sure not keeping that in. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Fine. Uh, can't find it. It's not back checker. Chloe, who are these little guys in Bloodborne who save us from becoming a monster? Yeah. They're, a second. they're called little sisters. And nope. That's <laughs> uh, a different game. 
Okay, so, okay, well, if they chose to save you, what's up with that? Why'd that happen? Uh, so, I mean, like in any HP Lovecraft thing, a lot of this stuff can be explained away as, like, it's too complex and past or even brain Yeah, but that makes bad podcasting. Able... Yeah, so I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. It's too they complex. Just, they just decided to save you? Yeah, so it's, like, essentially... I don't know if it's something that was like purposefully done by the blood ministrator to you or what, but like you have been, you ha are an outsider, which makes you an outcast within the society. Yeah. And it is through the means of blood ministration that you become a hunter. And there's not really too much of like a reason why or anything like that. It's just like, now you are. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they and, save you because you're the hunter. Yeah, it's like you're you have been either been chosen by a higher power. You have just happened to have like grasped like within the moments of falling to the beasthood. Um, thank you, fact checker. Yes, they're called messengers. Um, <laughs> Not by Facebook. <laughs> uh, yeah. So here, I'll just read the little description that Nick, it's uh, a meta. Chloe put. Oh, sorry. Messengers are baby like <laughs> creatures who act as companions and merchants for hunters. Messengers can be seen crawling out of portals connecting the human world with the nightmare world. They are unseen by normal folk, but are able to communicate with hunters. Chloe, tell us why the guy in Bloodborne became a hunter. Why did he get picked? <laughs> what's what's the nightmare world? Do I want to find yeah. out? What Chloe, that is? Chloe, do this episode. I want to go to the nightmare world. That's in what the, I in the meantime, what other what other monsters do you fight? You fight a god. Yeah, you fight well, some werewolves. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. You definitely fight werewolves. You fight some a werewolf. lot of werewolves. Most of the most of the things that you actually fight at the beginning of a game are townsfolk that are People. partially transformed into lycanthropes. No. Oh. So they're basically people still wearing like their clothes. They can still handle like tools. They can still like like they're carrying like fires. And like for them, you are you are taking place uh like everything that is happening during this game is happening during a night of the hunt this is mm. essentially where the church gathers all of the citizens of the town to come out to try and kill all of the beasts however all of the people that are taking place in the hunt have already succumbed to their beasthood so, so everybody's are, a beast every pretty everybody's a beast except for a select few hunters that you'll encounter throughout the story ah and i'm one yeah. of them yeah and w one of the crazy things too is, is like even some of these hunters will refer to like the dream the hunter's dream this thing that you think is like something only you can experience but They're it's like, not nah, I, I it's, get it too. yeah it's like people will refer to like oh i dreamt once like like they were once chosen to do things and now they have moved past that and they can't do it anymore no, so i was like, a hunter like you you yeah. had dreams until I took an I arrow took to the knee. <laughs> <laughs> it was my joke. I set it up. I'm gonna finish it, Nick. Arrow to the brain. You could have said. But, uh, but yeah. apart from like just like straight lycanthrope, like you've got like people who have transformed into like giant dumb versions, like hulking giants. Ah. Um, but the thing that is most scary and relates to the first boss that you fight in this game are members of the church who have been transformed by the blood. Uh oh. So the first beast that is a boss that you'll usually encounter is yeah. the cleric. Usually, beast. hold on. You could usually? take different paths in this game, buddy boy. Okay, a bit you can of go through this Roman. entire game without ever actually fighting the cleric beast. Okay, you could never fight mm. anything. Ever do a little bit of a pacifist run? Yeah. You get a good ending. Nope. Mm, nope. You gotta fight. Wake shit. up. <laughs> Wake up. The whole thing was a dream. You're in the basement of a place. Oh my God! It's five guys at Freddy's. <laughs> five guys at Freddy's. Five Ooh, guys. That's a different thing. Five, Five guys, guys versus Freddy. Freddy. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, okay. but yeah, so like like in typical Dark Souls-esque fashion, like so much of this game is completely based upon exploration and is mm -hmm. arguably one of the most important parts about this game. Like it, in this game, like you, the whole, it's the whole idea of like, you've got things that are like slightly nudging you in certain directions and like the game has certain pathways that you can take. But it's this idea that you can walk into any room and it's like, oh, a boss is just here. Like, and now I've got to be ready for it. Where's the, hey, a boss is here. Where's like the little, you know how some games will like queue you up 
for a they'll for be like battle. save here yeah they'll put like a <laughs> save point or something right before it. yeah they'll be like hey save here hey here's some health here's some ammo here's whatever yeah. else you need nah. <laughs> no that doesn't you know, exist in these games oh no nick, <laughs> nick just said ammo and it triggered something in me we're fighting all these freaking beasts we're knocking them out we're killing them how yeah, how are we doing could. that how are yes, we making them die that is a very good point <laughs> You got weapons in this game, just like you do in Dark Souls. Like, like in Dark Souls, Souls, you got like. <laughs> do you have an air? So, in Dark, like, so in Dark Souls, <laughs> in Dark Souls, you get like a much more like traditional medieval fantasy. You get like, sword weapons. You get swords. You get okay. you get like axes. You get and shields. You're a bitch you get if you bows. Use a shield. You get crossbows. <laughs> uh, you get all that sorts of stuff. Um, if you use a shield, you suck. <laughs> in Bloodborne, is that true? You get what's called a trick weapon as well as a gun. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. You get a gun. <laughs> yeah. 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 And like a Victorian, like blunder bus or pistol. Oh, like a Michael, don't forget the shooting. most important tool of all that you get. A magic wand. You get your these, brain. These oh. hands. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, the first, the first enemy that you ever fight in the game, you have to fight it without any weapons. And usually, like, so intro to the game, you wake up from this table, find the pale blunt, huh? da, 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 da. you walk out, you walk down this long, narrow stairway down into this opening in this clinic. There's oh, the surgery clinic. tables everywhere, and you Ooh, see this giant surgery. lycanthrope oh. feasting upon a body oh, no, right in the middle that, of the man. room. You don't have any hands. Oh, like, you got hands. I don't have hands. You don't have, <laughs> oh, no, you don't have any hands. weapons. You don't have, don't have any, any way to deal with this. Oh, shit. No so you're faced with this fact of like, okay, there is okay. a pathway beyond, like past it. Okay. I can either make a run for it or I can try and take it on. Most people try and take it on because it's a, it's an action game. It's your job to fight. And why I like to game... roll persuasion and convince <laughs> it to be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> What's your... Uh... What's your um? Oh, it's I been a while since Nick played D and D. What's okay, your, buddy? Uh, don't worry about it. What's your thing for this stuff? <laughs> Persuasion modifier was right. Tell, give me a number between one and ten. It's probably like fifteen or so. Yeah. So you get a so you get a gun. You get it hands. You get a trick weapon. Yeah, so yeah. A trick weapon and is the gun. No, trick weapon is not a gun. It's a okay. What's thing. the what's some the of them can weapon? be guns though. Okay. Um, so a trick weapon. It's the idea that you have a weapon that can take on multiple forms. Oh, so, dope. Yeah. And so that's like, like uh, Nick, what's that one game you liked? Control. Control. Kind of. I would call I would call that little SCP gun thing like a little trick weapon. What was it called? The uh, I don't know. Continue. I think yeah. <laughs> the bus you, is not there today. <laughs> but like say like you, like one of the weapons that you can get is a is just like a little straight sword. It's a straight sword. But you stick the end of it in this giant cement block on your back and it turns into a hulking great hammer oh, that you yeah. can use to smash the monsters that you face during the night into bloody pulp. Well, well, well. <laughs> nice. Others are ones that you have that is just like a saw blade that is like rounded around a handle and then you engage it and it completely extends the saw blade up and out uh, it's like daredevil weapons yeah yeah, yeah yeah um and every single weapon in this game is a trick weapon and has two forms which makes like even though like this game like traditionally like dark souls games you can get like well, like hundreds of weapons so you can get like tens to hundreds of weapons in bloodborne there's like under 20 or under 30 but because each of those weapons has multiple forms makes using each one feel so much more unique and more memorable than any of the weapons that you can get in Dark Souls. So how do you get your trick weapon? So you get to find it. Remember when you try and fight that lycanthrope with your hands? Yeah, I'm like, catch these fists, dumbass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually you die doing that. Oh, and when you die, you get sent to the hunter's dream. And it is at the hunter's dream the where nightmare the realm. messengers give you your choice in one of three trick weapons and, and one it's of random? two ones. No, it's a set three. So you can oh, either okay. hit a giant, Charizard. You can get uh, a one handed. <laughs> that is exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. You can get a one handed axe that when mm -hmm. activated, you can extend the handle to turn it into this giant fuck all axe. Nice. Um, 
which has in, which is based off of like your strength or and gives you like incredible reach or you can get that little like saw blade thing I was describing earlier. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that is actually in the game is that serrated weapons so like a saw blade does more damage to monsters. OK. Uh, the other trick weapon you can get is a pimp cane. That Pimpin. you smack people with. And the, I love that. The trick form <laughs> is that have you ever have, did, did you either of you guys ever play Soul Calibur? No. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of like imagine when you activate this, it the 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 long stem of the cane, the long part of it, like everything but the handle, turns into this serrated whip. I like that. That you can swing around and hit people with. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Pimpin. Yeah. And so it's this whole idea that you've got like you've got those three things and then you get to choose one of two guns. You can choose either like a like a Victorian blunderbuss or a Victorian like pistol. Mm -hmm. The whole drawback there is the blunderbuss does more damage with the pistol. You can fire it more quickly. And one of the one of the staples in Dark Souls and a lot of the times why you would use a shield, even if you're not like blocking all the time, <laughs> because you can parry. Like when like you are bound to the same rules as an enemy and when you can see that they're coming to attack you, if you time up that parry or just right, you can completely disarm your opponent. They leave a giant opening and you could do like critical damage to them. How do you do that in Bloodborne without a shield? What you have to do is you time up when you hit them with a gunshot and it opens them up to a visceral attack. Visceral attack, same thing as like a critical attack. Except instead of like in Dark Souls where you use your weapon to perform the critical attack, in Bloodborne, you jam your fist into their chest or their back <laughs> or wherever and Ow. just rip out just flesh and blood. And in that process, literally in the game, your entire character <laughs> gets covered and just like just viscera that sticks oh. on like your entire like self in this game gets covered in just wet blood. That's that's pretty gnarly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like I it's not until it. you like travel to another like travel back to the dream that your clothes or travel or change into another set of clothes that mm. your clothes are actually like cleaned off from the blood. <laughs> that leave a stain. Yeah, you can't so, get like, no you Clorox either. So like if you go the whole game without ever like traveling back to like the hunter's dream, which like I don't think you can do, like you can just accumulate blood and just get like literally every inch of your character covered in blood. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> it's on in layers. Gnarly. Yes. Um, and that's one of the things that like really differentiates Bloodborne from Dark Souls. Is Dark Souls is a lot of these like high fantasy things that like you you feel accomplished when you're doing it, but like nothing ever. And like, you feel a lot of satisfaction whenever you do anything in dark souls, whenever you succeed mm -hmm. in bloodborne, you get that same sense of success, but just with this like sense of just like, like bad assery, like <laughs> rip, like rip and tear through every enemy in your way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, is so satisfying. <laughs> it's like doom. Even when you're killing even the most insignificant of monsters, yeah, you can just, you can just, just... <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> actually, Doom is a great it. segue into this next point. You know what's great about Do uh, Doom? Huh? The music. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what's has the exact same feeling in Bloodborne? Minecraft. It's nope. Yep. It Bloodborne's music. Yeah. Bloodborne's music has so much of the same exact sense that Doom's does in such a different way. So yeah, like, in like Doom, <laughs> yeah, because like, electric guitars in a medieval. Right. Game. You want to explain that to me? So <laughs> instead of like in in Doom, where you have these like heavy synths and like 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 gut wrenching guitar riffs and just like putting that overdrive on maximum and all that shit, Bloodborne, much like the scenery around you borrows from like victorian orchestra oh thank mm. god that's exactly what i wanted you to say yeah <laughs> so the whole so, time you're like fighting it's like 
So imagine like instead of like when you're fighting like boss, like instead of having just like it's like you get like individually customized per boss music that is just like, like these heavy, music. deep like bass, like like orchestra bass. Oh, <laughs> like a Where double like, cello or whatever. Yeah, and then so you get that, and you combine it with like a chorus over top of it, like spouting this like Latin at you, and just like yelling. And there's like there's music in the Bloodborne soundtrack that to this day, like I listen to it, and it's just like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> All right, now I have to go play this game. <laughs> yeah, that's like, the, how the loan convinced me. <laughs> The, the there is music for uh there's the music for the cleric beast that first boss that you fight and then there's another boss that can be your first one uh, his name is Father <laughs> Gascoigne um he he is a hunter that is in the process of succumbing to his beasthood oh no uh, and so the first half of the fight you Where fight the babies him. at well that's the thing is like. He's a father, but so much of this is like church related. Is well, he a clerical father or is he a father father? Probably clerical. Yeah. I'll spare you the details. He's both. Um, what? You find, <laughs> oh my god! You, you find you his can't daughter's. Do that. You Spoiler find his daughter's alert, locked it's like, up. Uh, <laughs> it's like that one new show that just came out. Yeah. Don't Chloe, well, you're typing it. Don't type it. <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> it's Mari. You one, are one of the things is before you get before you get <laughs> the to night mass nailed it. It's like there the night mass yeah. nailed it. But before you fight mass. Father Gascoigne, you actually like while you're exploring, you can come across his daughters who are held up in their house with like all of the houses also have like are they barred? They've got like incense in front of them, which like uh keeps all the monsters away. Um I don't know what you're linking at. <laughs> Incense. <laughs> oh, okay. Bars. Sorry. Yep. Uh, but anyways, and like they're the all, daughter, all one of the daughters up. will like Little priest you daughters. Can, yeah, one of the daughters you can like you, get what I'm talk, you can talk to her, and she'll she will seek your help. She tells you that like her mother has gone out to try and find their father, who hasn't come back from the, his hunt for the night. Uh, well, you go, you fight Father Gascoigne. With and he makes no indication of like he has daughters or anything. It's just like it is your job as the player to put those two pieces together. Uh, you fight him, you kill their dad. <laughs> Ow! <You laughs> and one of, my one, dad. one of the, one of the things that's is one of my favorite yeah, parts about this fight is like halfway through the fight, Father Gascoigne will transform from a person into his beast. Like so, he goes from like human who's fighting you in the same ways that you would fight other like humans and hunters because mm -hmm. he's a hunter um and he goes into full on feral like beast mode like he stops using all of his weapons he just is roaring at you using his claws and his hands and like his mouth and just trying to rip and tear through you beast and mode. it's at that moment where he transforms where the soundtrack for his boss fight goes from like all right, yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. So, like, you know that like gif of like the kid in like the uh the red turtleneck sweater who's like got his hand, he's just going like having his eyes roll back in his head with wind blows, just like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that that moment in the music makes you do that. <laughs> now I see the gif in my head. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, not for your life. And it was like, it's for most people. It's like during that moment is when like, okay, like the gameplay, I get it. The setting, I get it. The music, I get it. Everything is just this perfect amalgamation into this just grotesque, but so enjoyable of an experience. Oh, and then to make matters worse after like during the boss fight with Father Gascoigne, if you like run around the arena up on like a balcony right inside the boss arena is the corpse of his wife with the brooch that the daughters told you to look for. Cool. Yep. Which you can then take to the daughter. And be like, they're both you, dead. You can either be like, you can either give her the brooch and be like, hey, I found your dad, killed your dad, he dad killed your mom, now you're an orphan. <laughs> Jeez. Or, uh, or you can tell them nothing and just leave them leave them in the despair of like what happened to my parents um 
<laughs> I didn't one of the things too is like eventually you get the ability to like send villagers to safe houses because like as the hunt prog- as the night of the hunt progresses like things are not getting better the villagers are just getting more and more like beastly and Good. grotesque uh and so it's the idea of like anybody who's out in their houses like they're not safe they have to go to like specific places in order to be safe there's like a chapel which is run by this creepy little dude who just like care takes after it, or you can send them to the clinic that you woke up in where the, the person who runs it will take care of them. Well, hmm. if you uh, tell the girls, if you, well, if you tell the girl, cause at this point you only know that there's one, like if you tell the girl like, Hey, your parents are dead, but I have a place where you can go where you can stay safe they will try and navigate these same streets that you are navigating. Imagine like a 12 year old girl or like a 10, 12 year old girl girl trying to navigate their way through these beast infested streets bad to try and make it to one of these. Yeah. It wouldn't, wouldn't actually uh, work out pretty well. So is it like an escort mission at that point? No, you never actually see her attempt to make this, this journey. What happens, though, is that another point in the game, after you have told her this and you are navigating through and like have reloaded at least once, you make your way through and you find in this sewer that is a direct line from her house to the chapel safe house. Mm -hmm. It is like the direct route to get there. You get through there and you fight beasts. And at one point, you fight this giant pig that is like just that has grown grotesquely huge. Um you fight it, you kill it, and it drops a bloody white hair ribbon. Oh, cool. It killed the girl. Yeah, the pig kills the girl. <laughs> oh. Okay. Why, yeah. why did the pig turn into a beast, though? Are they giving the blood to the pig? No, the, the person blood... turned into a, a pig beast. Oh, okay. Well, no, 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 no. In this, in this sense, it is a literal pig, but the pig has prob- has eaten the people um, who have had the blood. And so it's pigs will eat anything if you didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Billy Bone. Billy, yeah, yeah. if you get but, rid of a body, you throw it into a pig's pen, it'll it will be gone. Yeah, Good but that know. that is just like a little slice of like the like despair that this game can throw at you. Uh, but and it, it does it in a way that like you have to like be on the lookout. You have to be looking for these little tidbits in the story and this pieces of this overall narrative that it's trying to piece together for you to experience like just like in dark souls bloodborne doesn't tell you anything directly it is you up to you as a player to want to go on this journey to experience all of the little hidden gems in this plot that this game has thrown together into these like interweaving ideas that you get to see unfold as the night progresses does it ever turn into morning that depends. I think you never stop mourning. Well, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> I will say at the end of the game, uh, you are faced with a few options. Uh, you at the end of the game, you essentially you kill like you kill the eldritch hordes, and you are that able... word for Kentuckians. It's just so hard. Horrors. Horrors? Yeah. Horror. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad they're called uh, haunted houses and not horror houses. Or horror else houses. All be- no, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going down to the horror house. <laughs> Tally, am I? We're all going to the horror house. <laughs> you going where? <laughs> so, at the end of the game, so it's in the hunt, in the hunter's though. dream, there is a old man who's just there, and he's just watching over everything. His name's Garman. Um, at the end of the game, Get you. Home. After you have killed and finished your your mission of whatever this like higher being has set out for you, you have you've accomplished it. You go to Garman and he gives you two options. You can either uh, choose to die in the dream, which will grant you uh, which will wake you up within the waking world. So it'll end the night. So you wake up. So basically Garman decapitates you with a scythe and you yeah. wake up in Yarnum the next day at, at daybreak with all of the corpses and rotting bodies well, and everything. Yeah. All of it is the night has passed. Like you, can you I are guess what the to, other option is. Sure. I'd love you, to hear your guess for this. You, die. you no. stay in the nightmare realm. 
yeah. Basically, you can refuse Garamin. And he will, he's been wheelchair bound this whole time. He will stand up from his wheelchair and then beat the ever living fuck out of you. Damn it. And if you manage to beat him, you take his role. You are now stuck to the stream. It now is now you, your job. Now you are stuck in the wheelchair. You are, you are now stuck in the wheelchair <laughs> oh, no. to, uh, to help guide the hunters who will come after you. Dope. <laughs> so that's. You only get the shit beaten out of you if you if you like try and t- tell him a little fib, right? Yeah, that's well, no, hilarious. It's not, even, it's not even like a fib. It's just like like, do you want to return to the waking world? Yes or no. The answer is always it's like if 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 yes, I'll kill you and you'll wake up. If no, I'll kill you anyways and you'll wake up. <laughs> if you say no, you're obviously lying because who would want to live in the nightmare world unless you're, you know. Well, the whole, the idea there is that like you have gained enough insight to like see past what this is and like to, to, to look into the world beyond. And so because of that, you can either like it grant beating Garman offer opens up. There are many doors Ed boy. Uh, <laughs> the world has many holes Ed boy. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Don't raise your perception. That's, that's basically like, like imagine the narrative for this is like a, Victorian eldritch horror version of Rolf from Ed, Ed and Eddie. Incredible. Yeah. That's how wow. we'll, that's how we'll cap this thing off. <laughs> last, last question for you, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you could sum up what maybe the game developers were trying to send as a message in about, I'll give you 10 words. What would that's it be? Too short. Uh, I'll give you 10 paragraphs. Be afraid of what you can't see. Um, that's horrifying, <laughs> but persist, afraid? but persist through the nightmare. Persist through the nightmare. Okay. Are you be, counting those words? Be afraid of the Catholic church. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give, I got it. You I got it in six. Be, <laughs> be afraid of seeking higher knowledge. Yeah. There you be go. Be afraid of you for, for what you, for what you may find. Could sh- could shake your entire perception of reality. Bloodborne pathogens are a new discovery. Get tested often. Ten words nailed it. There you go. <laughs> Just don't share needles, and you won't get bloodborne pathogens. Hopefully, when we come back, quick this with DJW. Hey, and for those of you who are watching our podcast, this part will be uh, edited out. But who are watching the visual? Uh, and we didn't visually record our interview with DJW. So tune into the live shows on our Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter every, usually Wednesday, but we do one every week and you'll never miss out on stuff like that. But until next time, see you guys. Uh, Bye. Bye. This episode of Entertain This was written by Michael Savoya, with additional commentary from Alex Steele and Nick Mustakangas. Our showrunner and resident fact checker is Lloyd Price. Our theme music is Rush Hubble by Aaron Spencer, with interstitial music by DJW. Tune in every Friday for new episodes, and thanks for listening.